So, uh, Stalin, can you tell us the story behind your name? Or is, or is it a common name in your area? Or there is some story behind it? Actually, my grandfather is from a uh, communist background, sir. So, he wanted me to name as uh, Stalin Fidel based on the leaders of, uh, I mean, uh, Stalin, Joseph Stalin of Soviet Union and Fidel Castro of Cuba. And Kumar is my family name. And it uh, different meaning means to Lord uh, Muruga in Tamil Nadu, sir. All right. So, like both these leaders, Joseph Stalin and Fidel Castro, they are related with uh, communism, right? So, uh, yes. so can you tell me briefly what is the difference between between communism and capitalism? Uh, communism is uh, the economic system and the political system nowadays, uh, in which aims to achieve the communal ownership of means of production, and in capitalism. It's a private ownership of means of production, sir. So, like, in your opinion, which of these systems is more favorable towards our forest or environment? So, I feel the blend of both the system is uh, needed for our uh, forestry. Uh, even our uh, latest draft policy aims to achieve this, uh, where we uh, recognize the communal ownership of uh, forest lands through community reserves and everything. And uh, through joint forest management, and at the same side, we are also promoting forest-based industries where sustainable forest management is uh, is aimed to practice to be practiced. Okay, so like uh, like just like you mentioned, there is also a draft uh, in the parliament, or there is, there are some talks about uh, including private sector in managing our degraded forest, right? So, uh, yes. do you think we should include private sector in management of our forest, especially our pristine forest? So, with uh, due regulations and uh, statutory backing, uh, we can permit uh, private sector in uh, management of forest, uh, so that uh, efficiency and uh, diversification of uh, forest-based industries can be achieved in a more sustainable manner. To achieve this, we are also introducing a uh, concept of forest certification and ecosystem uh, valuation. So, these things can help to achieve uh, sustainable forest management through private sectors. Okay. So, like, can you think of any any one private sector group uh, which you can trust with, you know, uh, with, which you can trust with managing of our forest or what will be the basis, right? But because, why I'm asking this is because generally we, you know, we see that capitalists are the ones who, who whose interest lies in you know profit only so how can we trust or which is, can you think of any group whom we can trust of you know managing our forest sir uh, abnormal to judge uh, the particular group is capable of managing uh, but i feel uh, when uh, capitalism is uh, regulator i mean it's not given a free will and they can be efficient in uh, progress of the nation. And that is what we have been achieving as a uh, mixed economy in our uh, economic model. So this can be even uh, extrapolated into forestry, I think, sir. Okay, so, okay. so you can't think of a group uh, of... Uh, so uh, I can't, uh, I'm not able to give a judgmental opinion about the particular group can uh, provide it's their mission. Uh, it's all right, right? So, like, uh, you your hobby include watching Iranian movies, right? So, like, yes. do, you, do you know Persian? No, sir. Uh, not familiar with Persian, but I used to watch it with English subtitles, sir. So, like, I, I, we can see that you have mostly been in, in Tamil Nadu for your education and everything. So, do, uh, apart yes. from Tamil and English, do you know any other language also? Uh, no, sir. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, can you tell me what is special about Iranian movies? So, Iranian movies uh, tend to deal with uh, the emotions around the uh, life of children, sir, uh, which actually made me to feel nostalgic uh, about my child, my own childhood. So, I got interested in that. But apart from that, uh, they have a specialty of uh, realistic portraying of uh, society, and they take and they, they uh, create characters and they position the movie based on the moral point of view of each character, sir. For example, movie separation, salesman. These concepts have been dealt by Ashraf Harari. And apart from that, uh, due to the censorship rules in uh, Iran, uh, they tend to portray uh, political ideas and uh, political messages in a subtle way 
and uh, more in uh, uh, explicit ways sir so this gives a new uh, blend of uh, movies which is called postwave movies of uh, iran sir uh, are you aware of what is the national animal of iran uh, i'm not sure about sir can i make a guess sir yes please uh, i think it's a cheetah of iran and pizza no it is the asiatic lion yes. sorry sir all right not so, okay so like uh, can, uh, can you please give me three reasons three reasons of why asiatic lion should be reintroduced out of gujarat to other parts of india are you aware that there is there, is, there are talks about reintroduction of lion Yes, sir. There are. Uh, I'm aware. Okay. Sir. Just tell me three reasons why it should be re- reintroduced, and and two reasons why it should not be reintroduced. Sir, actually, I'm not able to recollect the actual reason. Uh, but can you take a guess? Uh, yes, please. So the Asiatic lion is a uh, one of the top predator in the food chain, sir, and the habitat is mostly on uh, grassland. uh one thing with respect to their source uh, they can be uh, more than the carrying capacity so they have to be relocated to some other areas and to protect uh, food chain in some other areas they need a top carnivore uh, and for which asiatic lion can become uh, can one of the options sir all right so uh, uh, like just just uh, for the sake of asking like you also watch biographies and you read uh, biopics right or bio biographies and you watch biopics so have you read the biography of joseph stalin and fidel castro so uh, sorry sir uh, i used to watch biopic movies uh, uh, and i'm not uh, into reading bio- biographies so you have books, you have not read a biography of uh, fidel castro or joseph stalin no sir i haven't read completely but i may uh, just know they are uh, to show the background uh, okay, it's all right you also have geology optional can you tell me f- the name of five metamorphic rocks yes sir um, nessus um, lines uh, marble sir so i got to recollect uh, all the names sir it's it's all right so uh, uh, stalin my last question to you is that your birthday is on 14th of january right Yes. So, uh, like fourteenth of January in a major in in a l- large part of our country, we, uh, the people fly kites, right? It is pretty pretty common in Gujarat, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, and even in some parts of southern India, right? So, are you aware of that? Uh, no, sir. I'm actually aware of uh, January fourteenth as a harvest festival of uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, other areas. Okay, so can, not, you, uh, can you can you can you name festivals. me what it is called in the northern belt? Uh, sir, is it about the kite festival or are you asking about uh, what? Fourteen uh, January, fourteen January. What it is called in uh, maybe in Madhya Pradesh, in Gujarat? Are you aware of anything? Uh, 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 sir, generally, uh, yes. It's called as Baisakhi, Biku, and uh, I mean uh, so many names in uh, north and northeast India. Uh, and Pongal in South India, sir. Okay, it is also called Makar Sakranti, right? Fourteenth of January. Okay, so yes. like, can you make a guess? Why do people fly kites on that day? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware of it. Okay. It's all right, right? So over to thank you. That's all from my side. Over to Advait, sir. Well, uh, good morning, Stalin. Good morning, sir. So first of all, I would like to know because you have Stalin and Fidel, two important personalities. One of them is contemporary. So I would like to know what is the right to sit. Sorry, sir, I am not able to hear it clearly. Okay. Uh, what is the right to sit? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sir, I am not aware of it. Okay, because uh, it was very much in the news recently. It's associated with Tamil Nadu. It's a bill introduced by Tamil Nadu government regarding sorry, right sir. to sit. Okay. So. and uh, finally so what is the contribution of uh, fidel castro as far as uh, cuba is considered um, del castro along with uh, ernesto che guevara uh, were the leaders of revolutionary movement against uh, uh, gilogi batista uh, who had the support of usa and he uh, 
and he became ultimately became the president of Cuba. And uh, apart from his rise to his uh, presidentship, uh, he was uh, he was instrumental in uh, introducing uh, many socialistic uh, reforms in the society, uh, like uh, free medical education uh, and new agriculture policy, like that, sir. And uh, like you just mentioned, that Cuba is very much well known for its health system globally. Yes, sir. So, what is One Health? The concept of One Health. So, One Health uh, means uh, considering the uh, animals and the humans as the entire chain of uh, health management system. Sir. Okay. So, do you think that uh, owing to the contemporary times, it is more relevant now? And if so, why? Yes, uh, because the rise of zoonotic diseases and uh, there are uh, also many research which suggests that uh, the COVID might have been origin uh, originated from animals. So uh, one health concept has become has gained a new approach uh, in these times. Okay. Now your college was in Madurai, and uh, I suppose it was in Madurai. Sorry, sir, uh, college was in Chennai, sir. Okay, it was in Chennai. Okay. Uh, so uh, this Tamil Nadu has a uh, typical vegetation because of its geography. Can you name this vegetation? So it's a uh, tropical dry evergreen vegetation in the eastern coast of Tamil Nadu, sir. Okay. So can you name a few species like which are associated with dry evergreen vegetation? Yes, sir. Kasharna uh, Belt is along the eastern coast of uh, Tamil Nadu. Apart from that, I could able to recollect uh, Azadeta indica is one of the species in this course, sir. Okay. And what is the reason having this unique vegetation in Tamil Nadu, not found elsewhere in India? Sir, I am not sure about the exact reason. Can I make a calculated guess, sir? Okay. So I suppose uh, it receives rainfall from both uh, southwest and uh, Northeast monsoon for major part of the year, so it, uh, it so it appears evergreen uh, throughout the year, uh, and the rainfall is not uh, I mean uh, it's ab it's more than two hundred centimeters, so it is a dry evergreen, sir. It is lesser than one fifty centimeter. Okay, that's valid. Uh, now I would like to know like what is the role of the community, or shall I say, what is the role of the culture, especially when it comes to forest conservation. Sir, uh, can you repeat it, please, sir? Yeah. What is the role of the culture when it comes to forest conservation? Can culture play a, an important role with respect to conservation? Yes, sir. I think culture can play an important role with respect to both uh, forest conservation and uh, wildlife conservation. Uh, we have seen many incidents of uh, sacred groves in uh, so many areas like uh, Kovil Kaudu, we call in Tamil Nadu. Apart from that, uh, Bishnoi community is famous for its conservation of uh, tiger in uh, Rajasthan. So, uh, culture has been a part of, I mean, forest has been a part of our culture uh, from uh, traditional times and uh, it can play a crucial role in conservation and we have recognized this through our community reserve concepts. Uh, but now of late, we are witnessing a decline in uh, sacred groves because Tamil Nadu has a rich culture of sacred groves. But some decline is being observed. So, what are the reasons behind it? So I think the reason behind this uh, conversion of uh, sacred groves into non-forestry purposes due to uh, development challenges. And apart from that, uh, uh, earlier the uh, population was not mobile and they have a cultural significance with respect to the areas. Now uh, the population has, mo uh, has been become mobile due to uh, globalization and uh, other associated developments. And uh, it has lost its cultural, it has been uh, losing its cultural relevance uh, uh, in those areas, new people come to occupy a new towns and villages. So these things makes the uh, sacred groves uh, gain less relevant. But we have to uh, reinvigorate the concept of sacred groves so that it can be preserved. Sir. So do you think that changing belief system can also be a challenge here? With uh, more education, now people are becoming more aware, so they believe that uh, it may it might be something associated with superstition rather than the cultural value of the secret groups? Sir, yes, sir, I feel it can be, cannot be the entire, I mean, a complete reason for the change, but uh, there can be uh, possible uh, uh, 
actions in the impossible incidents where uh, superstitious beliefs tend to overcome the concept of sacred god sir okay uh, what is shola forest uh, shola forest or uh, tropical mountain forest where uh, grasslands and uh, stunted trees intersperse each other uh and they are uh, located in karnataka tamil nadu and kerala uh, in western ghats sir okay so what is the major threat they are facing one important threat one important threat is uh, invasive species like uh, senna spectabilis uh, black wattle uh, these things are uh, important threat to shola grass monster sir okay and uh, like you were talking about iranian cinema you mentioned a uh, new wave over there So can you elaborate on this concept? So the new way with respect to the post 1979 Iranian revolution, uh, where uh, a new government with uh, Islamic outlook uh, 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 can outlook uh, entered the office. So after that, uh, many censorship rules have come. So uh, that was uh, the time started to. Re- reintroduce introduce a concept of uh, movies around the children of, um, around the life of children and uh, they become the censorship rules become strong so they started to uh, innovate new methods how to give political messages without uh, getting uh, got uh, censors so can you name some esteemed directors from iran yes sir Uh, Majid Majidi, who is one of my favorite directors, and apart from him, uh, Ashfaq Faradi, uh, Jafar Panahi, and uh, Matlam, and uh, Samira Matlam uh, is uh, daughter actually. And uh, your background is mechanical engineering. So, as a mechanical engineer, like uh, how you can contribute to the field of forestry and forest management? Sir, uh, as a mechanical engineer, in broad terms. Uh, it's about uh, structure and logic behind the system so uh, i can contribute uh, through an un- analytical skills with respect to the structure and logic behind a forestry system or a protected area uh, in uh, specific terms uh, new areas like uh, drones has been used for uh, uh, i mean uh, forest surveys those things so i can contribute in those ways uh i think as a mechanical engineer your work also covers production and operation part also and there are certain uh, wood based industries also i suppose so that's another area where the, you can contribute whether you have a pulp based industry or wood kins are also there like seasoning operations are there so you do have concepts like thermodynamics and uh, because i just mentioned uh, seasoning so can you tell me uh, what are the major defects that occur because of seasoning of wood so uh, seasoning defects like uh, cracks uh, bowing uh, and uh, cup shape the wood wood uh, defects those things can occur so i'm not exactly recollect uh, the entire list of defects okay. and uh, what are the two methods of seasoning two prominent methods i'm asking so i think it's a yard seasoning and uh, electric kiln seasoning sir. okay and uh, what is the advantage over uh, kin seasoning is having over yard seasoning or your seasoning if we speak so yard seasoning is in uncontrolled environment so we can't control the particular temperature and uh, moisture which we need but in kin seasoning we can get our uh, required uh, record get our wood based on our requirements sir. and uh, yard seasoning uh, can be done in it can be done in more um, Uh, mass scale, which is the advantage. In film seasoning, it is a little bit costly, and it can be done in mass scale uh, due to the restrictions of uh, the cost and the uh, area associated. Yeah, but uh, kin seasoning has this advantage that it's more uniform. You don't get uh, splitting over the ends, which is often associated with yard seasoning or air seasoning. So that's a major advantage. Otherwise, cost differences there between the two. That's obviously there. So I'll uh, so. This was the last question. So now let's move to the next panel member. Thank you, Rajji sir. If he is ready, yes. <clears throat> Hello, Stalin. So uh, yes, your interest, uh, you said, is you know watching biopic also. 
So, yes. can you name some of uh, your favorite biopics which you have watched recently? So, the recent biopic I watched is uh, Shesh Shah, which is about uh, Captain Vikram Bhatra. Uh, and apart from that, uh, 83 uh, is a movie which I recently watched. Uh, so, these things are recent favorite biopics, sir. Otherwise, in general, in past years, which biopics you watched and which one, you know, you liked the most? Sir, so like uh, Biopic of Gandhi. And apart from that, I like mm -hmm. uh, Pursuit of Happiness, Invictus. Those two are, uh, those three are uh, one of my favorite biopics mm -hmm. uh, in the past. So. Okay, that's great. So, <clears throat> normally, you know, we see biopics on either the cricketers, film stars, even politician, and a lot many biopics on uh, criminals also. But uh, yet, India has to see a biopic on a, a government official, a bureaucrat or civil servant. So, what could be the probable reason? Sir, I feel the reason behind this, uh, uh, the permissions and the integrities needed to make a biopic on a government servant and the uh, secrets associated with it. Uh, there can be uh, issues with respect to official secrets like where certain work of government officials cannot be disclosed in public. Okay. But uh, also that uh, one reason could be that we government officials are not inspiring enough that uh, no filmmaker ever thought of making a film on a government official. Sir, I feel uh, it's more about a perception uh, thing, sir. Uh, we can't say that government officers are not inspiring, but uh, there was not a medium, uh, as you said, from uh, from the point of view of film industry to take the inspiring stories of officers to uh, to the public. So, can you name a few government officials or the bureaucrats who were inspiring to you, who, with whom you get inspired? So from Tamil Nadu, uh, got inspiration from Mr. Sagayam Ayes, uh, who was uh, instrumental in uh, uh, instrumental in uh, getting uh, getting out the uh, the granite scam in uh, Indian my district. So he's one of my inspirations. Okay, okay. Anyone else? So I don't have any uh, particular inspiration no. other than this. Uh, no issues. No issues. So, <clears throat> also your interest is in Iranian cinema. So, and you know, cinema is always considered to be a reflection of society. So, uh, can you, uh, you know, specify some cultural trait of Iranian society, which you have observed uh, through the cinema? So, the way in which they uh, show women has been a uh, Part of, I mean, as a reflection of the society, uh, we know the uh, the restriction behind uh, how to show showcase a woman. So this is uh, reflected in uh, Iranian movies with respect to their dress and that they are, uh, and in which occasion they should dress, uh, which, which type of dress. Uh, and apart from that, the entire thing, the food and the way they uh, conduct a marriage, these things are reflected in movies. Uh, even from uh, can recall a movies uh, called. Uh, a piece of sugar in which uh, how a marriage is being conducted in uh, Iran has been reflected in the, so in the, in the movies. So, so, do you find any customs or social norms of Iran inspiring and you feel that, you know, such should be in India as in society, we must adopt something from them? Sir, uh, couldn't uh, relate uh, that uh, this thing should be adopted in India. Uh, they have their own culture okay. and we have, we have uh -huh. uh, our own uh, culture. Sir. Okay, uh, fine. Also, you mentioned about the cheetah in Iran. And uh, when we have cheetah in Iran, and you must be aware that government of India is now in dialogue with the uh, African, you know, countries 
to get cheetahs from there to introduce in india and uh, the one variant found in iran is the asiatic cheetah and uh, africa has a different subspecies altogether so why we are not trying to get cheetahs from iran do you have any idea so i'm not exactly aware of the reason sir uh, but i think uh, habitat uh, differs from uh, yeah usually cheetah in iran and uh, india so they feel that uh, it can't adapt to indian condition uh, i think so okay thank you so this much is from my side bayank um, uh, we must switch over the thank you abhishek good morning stelin good morning sir how was your morning sir it's fine sir okay uh, you have done your graduation in mechanical engineering right yes sir can you tell me what is the second law of thermodynamics so it's about the entropy of uh, isolated system uh, will not remain constant it can it goes on increasing uh, The randomness in the system goes on increasing, sir. That is the uh, second law of thermodynamics. Uh, what is octane number? Sorry, sir. Uh, not yet to be corrected. It's related with uh, gasoline engine, I suppose, but I am not able to tell you. Okay, it is related to compression of the fuel, right? Okay. Uh, you have your uh, one of the subject as geology, right? Yes. Uh, can you define fold and fault? Fold is the uh, is a structure in which uh, the rocks uh, bend due to compressive forces, and fault is uh, it's a type of fracture where the relative there is a relative upper moment of uh, blocks along the particular planes. Okay, what is subduction zone? Subduction zone is an area where uh, a uh, more heavier plate uh, gets subducted into a less heavier plate and it is visible in uh, areas like uh, ocean and the continent convergence zones okay have you heard about the term benioff zone uh, sir sir can you please repeat it have you heard about the term benioff zone uh, sir sir okay uh, can you define earthquake earthquake is uh, generally the uh, uh, shaking of earth uh, due to the seismic waves which is uh, originated uh, below the earth yes, sir okay what is the elastic theory of earthquake sir when uh, rocks regain their uh, position or get into uh, elastic position uh, they release energy and uh, this energy is uh, visible as uh, p and s waves on the crust which leads to earth crust earth crust okay actually the energy released due to the elastic bending of the rocks okay okay sorry sir no 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 problem okay can you name the three scale on which earthquakes are measured yes sorry sir uh, three scale three scale on which earthquakes are measured Sir, uh, I could recollect only two scales. Uh, can I proceed with it, sir? Uh, you you do not know about the third scale? Uh, not sure about the third scale, sir. Okay, name the two. So it's uh, Richter scale and the two. Yes, sir. It's a uh, Richter scale and the Mercalli scale. Uh, Richter scale is used to measure the magnitude of a crack, and the Mercalli scale is for measuring the intensity of a crack. And Richter scale is a logarithmic scale. And uh, uh, that's a different thing. Now, this uh, too. Yeah, you like seeing Iranian movies. Yes. Why Iranian movies, not Indian movies? Uh, it's not that uh, I don't watch Indian movies, but uh, I consider it as a hobby uh, to watch Iranian movies uh, uh, because uh, uh, they, they 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 tend to deal about the. Uh, life around uh, children in a more novel manner, uh, which is which will be poetic, and sometimes it made to feel nostalgic about my own childhood. 
so i started very interested in those movies and later i started to watch movies uh, where there are been realistic portrayal of uh, the society in iran uh, and as i said the, the subtle way in which they say the political messages uh, it gives a new innovation to the way of uh, filmmaking sir. so i got uh, okay you say you said that uh, iranian movies portray the life of child and woman many indian movies la portray the cha- life of child and woman so why not indian so i feel uh, there are lesser movies to portray the life of children uh, uh, what i saw in iran movies is uh, the poetic way of portraying the children the innocence they tend to uh, project on the screen which i feel is missing in our indian movies though there are movies like uh, even we have a movie called kada mate in tamil nadu uh, but uh, the major movies are based on that okay. you also like uh, watching biopic movies yes sir. right do you think biopic movies often glorify the character yes sir i think there are instances of uh, glorification of uh, character uh, so uh, at those times i i feel that uh, they should have uh, clearly said that it's a fictionalized account of the character and not the exact portrayal of the events in his life so it, there is verification sir i accept it. okay that's all from my side uh, stalin thank you over to you lisa sorry sir oh. yeah good morning stalin uh, good morning sir so uh, the uh, cricket quiz you are interested in okay so is there i'm interested in uh, no year in the uh, i was uh, i attended no year in the quiz by the day sir i'm interested in cricket uh, okay that's uh, both are separate okay yeah both are separate okay no problem so uh, can you tell me two players two indian players who have played six editions of world cup cricket world cup So uh, one is uh, Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, another person, uh, can I make a guess? Sir? Yes, go ahead. I think it's uh... sorry, sir. Uh, not a little bit. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, you can think across the gender as well. I think it's uh, Mitali Raj. Uh, yes, perfect. and uh, can you tell us who is the highest run getter in test cricket so i think sachin tendulkar is the highest run getter in test cricket from uh, nine and uh, highest wicket taker in test cricket so it's mutaya uh, murlidharan from sri lanka yeah perfect so uh, can you tell us three things which bollywood should learn from iranian movies just three points so there is uh, the way to uh, how to portray the life of uh, children as i said which is a unique feature of uh, iranian movies and the second thing uh, 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 how to express uh, how to convey a message in a more subtle manner uh, than a direct manner uh, so even uh, freedom of expression allows to project is in direct manner when it said as a subtle manner it becomes less preachy to the audience and it can be it gets a wider audience uh, the third thing uh, uh, i feel uh, there are issues in uh, uh, obscene uh, portrayal of women in our society uh, not saying about exact bollywood Uh, it's uh, generally it's found in uh, all the cinemas of uh, our India. So these things can be learned from my hands. Okay, and who is the district magistrate of your district right now? So it's uh, Mr. Madhusudan Nayes. Okay, and who is the governor of your state? It's Mr. R N Ravi I P S. Governor. Yes, sir. It's Mr. R N Ravi I P S. is a governor of uh, tamil nadu sir okay okay very good so uh, what is this concept of biodiversity hotspot 
So it's basically a concept uh, uh, from Norman Mayers, uh, which uh, defines a place, which is a place based on the uh, endemicity of uh, vascular plants. Uh, it should have uh, 1, 5, at least 1,500 species, vascular plants as endemic species. And uh, it should have lost at least uh, less than, greater than 70% of its original habitat. Are there any biodiversity hotspot in India? Yes, sir. There are uh, four biodiversity hotspots in India. Sir. Yeah, can you name them? So it's uh, Eastern Himalayas, Western Ghats, and Sri Lanka, uh, Indo Burma, and uh, Sunda land. Okay, and uh, can you tell us few GI tags of your district, uh, your state? Uh, Kandangi sari from my own uh, district is one of the tag, and Pattamadai pal uh, they say in uh, India, and they say in Tamil Nadu. Uh, those two things I could identify with. Okay, and can you tell us three kingdoms uh, from ancient and medieval India which ruled the parts of this Tamil Nadu, the contemporary Tamil Nadu? Uh, Chera, Chola, and the Pandya are the three major kingdoms which rule Tamil Nadu. Apart from that, there is a Pallava kingdom also. Okay, good. And uh, that's all from my side, Stalin. Okay, now over to you, man. Okay, okay so like uh, Stalin, I'll end the mock with the last question. Can you tell me which is the most dangerous problem India is facing presently, in your opinion? So I feel there are incidents of uh, communal hatred uh, which uh, gets spread in uh, social media. Uh, there has been occasions of uh, minor riots, which I feel is a major uh, problem at present. So, so like, uh, what, what, what is the reason for these communal riots and communal flare-ups, which often like keep happening at many places? So I feel uh, there has been a uh, um, uh, reduction in uh, intolerance in the society in certain areas. I'm not saying that the entire society has become uh, intolerant. There has been parts of uh, intolerance, intolerant attitude uh, towards uh, people in particular in certain pockets of uh, India. All right. So, like, what can uh, what can we do, we do to you know? Uh, suppress it right because india has always been known for its not tolerant attitude and indians are worldwide known for you know uh, this uh, communitarianism so what what can we do uh, to suppress it so the first thing is uh, law of the land should be should take the uh, role uh, where uh, strict uh, legal punishment should be provided based on uh, present law and second there should be a behavioral change and a movement uh, within the society Uh, it should be taken uh, it should be initiated by uh, respective uh, people from various communities there has been past incidents where this has been done uh, after uh, we are particular we are that uh, particular leaders from uh, different religions they come together and they propagate tolerance this type of initiatives can be reinvigorated in uh, at present sir. all right so uh, it was great talking to you stalin uh, your mock interview you, is over you can leave the call uh, and i'll call you back for the feedback uh, like after few minutes right so thank okay, you thank you sir